another case study. When Ted and his wife came to me, uh, they said they wanted a natural business. Uh, I like to put that in there because I think there's a little funny story behind it. The lady who referred them to me is one, a great friend, but she can never remember names. <laughs> so whenever we would talk, she wouldn't ask me about Ted. She would say, how's that granola couple doing? <laughs> Uh, you can see why. The Sars had, had a new idea. He had been in this company forever. He had a new idea for another company, and he took his eye off the ball. So what happened was, around Labor Day, Ted and the Sour went to a trade show. And we were supposed to close, I think it was the end of October. Come back from the, he comes back from the trade show. We start looking at the financial statements. We start looking at all the orders in the sales pipeline, and the orders are almost down existence. Sales have been going down. And the seller says, yeah, I took my eye off the ball. I've been working on my new company. I can't sell it to you in this condition. And of course, Ted is thinking, I can't buy it in this condition. But he says, Ted, I want to sell to you. Relationship again, strong relationship. We hung in there. And it wasn't too long later that Ted was hired by the seller on a very lucrative consulting contract. He wanted to keep him around. He didn't want Ted going and buying another business. Ted got paid a pretty substantial amount of money to learn the business before he bought it. Highly unusual. So he hit the ground a few months after that, not running, up almost to speed. You can see his financing package. He put in 25%, bank 50, the seller financed 25%. And I know he's paid off, he had paid off the seller years early. Can I ask, when you, when you have seller put some money in, so does that mean the seller at that point has sold it to you and yes. is putting some money in? No, not put money in, it's taking a, a note, a loan, it's giving you a loan. I see. So you buy it for 100%, Ted put in 25% cash out of his investments, the bank put in another 50% at a price, so the seller at the closing got 75% at a purchase price in cash. He then financed, he took a note for 25%. Yeah. What are the uh, usual terms? These days, almost all acquisition loans go through the Small Business Administration, the SBA's guarantee program. The SBA guarantees the loan to the bank, or 75% of it, typically. And they are usually going to give you a 10-year term with no prepayment penalty. They want it, They recognize they can't give you a four- or five-year term, and you know, your cash flow is going to be way too tight. When I talked about the prediction that there's a lot of sellers that are wanting to sell and that sellers are starting to come out more, be more prevalent, this is it. It's the wealth transfer, it's the demographics. Uh, it was you know, Intuit, the people that made QuickBooks did a study a few years ago, talked about this very subject and how entrepreneurial the baby boomer generation is. So there's a high percentage of businesses owned by people in that age, that age range. Uh, this just came out less than a year ago from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Just think about it. Two thirds of companies in that five to fifty million dollar range are going to change hands in ten years. That's a lot. Here's my objective when I work with people uh, who are buying a business: level this playing field so the buyer does not have an uphill climb. So think about buying a business, finding a business, similar to what they teach you here on finding a job. The first thing we want to do is we want to eliminate this buyer competition. If you're the only one interviewing for a job, if you're the only one talking to an owner who wants to sell their business, you're in a lot better position than if you found something on monster.com or the business you found it on one of the internet sites. What percentage of jobs make it to the internet, the recruiters, etc.? 10%? 10? 20% in businesses, small and mid-sized businesses, 20% are ever advertised or listed by a business broker. The other 80% are sold direct from seller to buyer. Uh, what, I, what I found interesting too is some statistics, I think, uh, only a couple years old, that they told me here that job seekers who have a plan to find a job and implement the plan find that job one-third faster than those without the plan or those who don't follow the plan. I can tell you it's the same thing, even maybe even greater for business buyers. 
And they also told me that most jobs are found with only two to three degrees of separation from the job to you. And it's like I tell my clients, you don't need to know 500 people who know your name and will forget the next day you're well, thinking of buying business. You need to know 75 to 100 people who you stay in touch with and will be your team. It's the same thing. Great chart that compares startups, franchises, and business buying and key factors such as investment needed and plannings and marketing and a whole bunch of about 20, 25 factors. So we'll talk about the uh, buying process. And I've got a nine-step process here, and this is the first one, search, which I break out. And I break it out because just like finding a job, you can't do anything. You can't, you can't negotiate a job interview if you don't have a job offer. And you can't get a job offer if you haven't found someone I didn't say that right. You can't get, you can't, you can't negotiate an offer until you've got it, got the offer. You can't get the offer until you've had interviews. You got to find the interviews. Same with businesses. You got to find the business before you can analyze it, look at financing, perform due diligence, get a deal going. So I've mentioned this one twice in my case studies. It's a relationship game. One of my clients a number of years ago. When he said this, I had helped him sell a business to his one of his competitors. Uh, we, he had bought two businesses, and he said, I would never buy from or sell to somebody I don't like. It is truly a relationship game. And if you're talking about getting a franchise, you deal with Jeff, it's the same thing. If you see a franchise and you like it, and you don't like the franchisor, or they don't like you, it's not going to happen. In you know, a small business is relationships all the way. The other one that I break out, we, you know, gathering inf initial information is where too many buyers trip up. They look at nothing but the financial statements. You have to look at what's behind the financial statements. The relationships, diversity of customers, the employees and management team, the landlord situation, the lease. Uh, can you get financing for it? Uh, what about the suppliers, the competition, the marketing? So we use the acronym, the SELVES. Here's the rest of the steps. And what I want you to realize is, other than closing, all of these other things get intermingled. It really do it doesn't go linear. In fact, these days, financing could almost be a subset of search. I tell my clients, if you find a company you think you like, and the same goes with a, a franchise, you find one you like, what are the financing options? Right away, see where they are. Ninety-five percent of people who say they want to buy a business never do. And I don't mean people who just come to a session to hear about it. I mean people who say, I want to buy a business, most of them. And some aren't serious, many aren't serious. But an example, I went to a bank's Christmas party recently. I'm talking to a guy, and he asked me what I do, and I tell him. And his first comment was, I wish I had met you a dozen years ago. I was looking for a business to buy. I couldn't find a decent one. When I did find one that seemed okay, I was getting outbid. They were just overpaying for it. So I asked, how are, how are you finding the businesses? Well, he was looking on the internet, in the newspaper, the usual suspects that everyone was looking at, and a lot of buyer competition. He, by that point, he was in his mid to upper 60s, he says, I'm gonna retire from my current job. So a lot of them get frustrated because they just don't know how to find the good ones. There's your three-legged stool of what it takes to be a qualified buyer. Good experience, enough money, good personality. You can build a relationship with the seller. You're on a great path to success. In fact, when my clients say to me, I met with the seller for the first time, we spent two, two and a half, three hours together, we maybe talked 20 minutes on the business, and the rest are just building rapport, I say, you're off to a good start. You at least have a chance. Yeah. So after when you buy a business, it's totally different from what you passed the experiences. Usually it's different, and, and actually it's, it is an uh, important issue with banks. What is your relevant industry experience? And if it's a very specialized industry, you're going to need industry experience. But I told, the deal I was telling you about before, uh, the, 
the business uh, had enough qualified technical employees. The owner has not been active in the, doing the work for five to ten years. He works part-time, primarily does the accounting, bookkeeping, we'll call it. So the buyer coming in with general business management experience is fine as far as industry experience. Yet. The buyer's never been in this industry, but he doesn't have to be a technician in the industry. He can be a, a manager and a leader in it. So a couple more uh, client case studies. Uh, Tim was a, was a great guy. Was a great guy, is a great guy. Found a couple owners in their mid to upper 60s, owned two businesses. One was a cash cow. They were going to hang on to it because it was absentee ownership. But they were selling the one, the one business, and he ended up buying it. He, he talked about culture in a business, and that's one of the things Tim saw. There's no excitement in this company. He figured he, he, figured he could do something. Uh, it was confirmed when he met with the top vendor. And the vendor said, we love this couple. They've been great. They know our industry. We just wish they would work a little harder because there's a lot, a lot of business out there they could be having. Now, Tim is my poster child for think small, not big. When he came to me, he said, here's the size deal I want to do. Here's how much money I have to put into the deal. Here's the actual deal he did. A lot less than even the cash he had. But he grew it. It took him a year plus, and he was able to get up, up to the salary he wanted initially, but he didn't mind because he left a lot of money in his bank account. He's been on the Business Journal's fastest growing list uh, two years. Yeah, he, cause he, knew, he knew what he could do. He's, again, he saw that. There was no excitement in his company, and he was able to create that. If Tim is a poster child for Think Small, Not Big, Keith is a poster child for being a great client, buyer, and owner. Decades-old business, uh, you can see, sales had trickled down over five years. In fact, the deal almost collapsed. Technically, it did collapse and had to be rejuvenated because the seller said, Keith, I like you. You're half my age. you got a lot of skills, but this business has been going down every year. That was still profitable. And Keith was able to convince him. He had what it took. He had a plan. He had the energy. He also noticed, and I say buyers notice things. This 70-year-old owner was taking numerous two, three, four-week vacations during the year. He said, just by being here, I can do better. And he was. You know, first year, small growth. Second and third year, Puget Sound Business Journal, fastest growing privately held companies. Uh, once in the top 10 or 15. I'll never forget the one thing he said to me. It's the fourth bullet point. We we're talking about six months after he bought the company. And I said, how's marketing doing? Now, he had brought in his buddy from college. It would be nice to say to head up his marketing department. His buddy was his marketing department. And he said, it's amazing what happens when you actually pick up the phone and call your customers. He's, you know, those are the kind of things when an owner is taking a third of a year off or more. You, you can figure I can do better. So Jeff talks to you about uh, this self-employment assistance program, right? SEEP. So the state will let you be on unemployment even if uh, you're not doing a job search, if you're looking to start a business, buy a business, or get a franchise. Okay. So why, does the, why do they do that? Keith doubled the number of employees in the first two or three years. He has since almost doubled it again that new energy coming in creating jobs. If you go to my website, 